Morris. Um, I'm here today to review two readings I've done, uh, two cases in Chicago. Uh, they're separate cases, but I've had so many requests from both that I thought I'd just uh, put one after the other. <clears throat> and then after those two cases, I'm going to quickly uh, talk about uh, Chris Watts' case, just one aspect of it. So the first one is Kanika Jenkins, an odd case because um, um, we're not, the police are not totally sure that there was any foul play. And as they may have even concluded that there was no foul play, but I beg to differ on that and I'll tell you why. So just the few parameters I'll tell you about. Uh, she was in um, partying in Rosemont, Illinois, which is near Chicago, ninth floor of the Crown Plaza Hotel, and uh, started late, ended about 1.30. She comes down <clears throat> to the foyer uh, with her couple girlfriends, and she realizes she forgot her phone and keys. So the girlfriends went upstairs, and um, <clears throat> they come back down 10, 15 minutes later, and she's gone. Um, <clears throat> They eventually called her mom, notified police, and, of course, the hotel staff. And uh, uh, the police delayed getting there. They said, wait a couple hours, and, uh, uh, and then they'd be out. So, uh, And it is a very sensitive case because of some of the action by the police. So anyway, uh, to make a long story short, uh, they found Kanika, uh, dead in a um, unused kitchen area on the first floor in their uh, walk-in freezer. And that was 24 hours later after she was reported missing. So um, <clears throat> blood tests showed that um, she was slightly over the limit um, and, uh, and she had some prescription drugs also uh, some prescription drugs in her bloodstream. And if there is a film of, of Kanika walking up and down the halls uh, on the first floor, trying to get into certain doors, and I, I have no idea what that's about, maybe trying to find a restroom or whatever, but it was very obvious she was very, very inebriated. And the police conjectured, and I think it's probably correct, that the... Uh, Prescription drug exacerbated the effects of the alcohol because alcohol, she was very, uh, very uh, unstable as she was knocking around the hallways. <clears throat> and then a camera later showed her going into the uh, uh, unused kitchen. And uh, so uh, that's, the, that's the story. That's the parameters of it. And <clears throat> since the... Uh, Police uh, said that th no one could go in that unused kitchen or out of there uh, without being seen by the camera. They just suspected that she opened the freezer door, fell in, and died of hypothermia. Uh, I did a reading on this, and uh, I didn't know if there was a anything different that I could add. And I, I think there is. I think there is a culprit to this. <clears throat> For the first reading, uh, the first vision I got was of a blue sky with clouds coming over. And usually blue sky, when I, when I do this, means that the police are right on and I, th there's no mystery involved. It's just what they picked up is correct. And then the clouds show me that in fact they missed something and uh, we need to investigate. And the second uh, vision I got was very telling. I see a white male uh, who dressed in white. Uh, he's part of the kitchen staff of that hotel. He's small, uh, 40 years old, uh, probably from uh, Eastern Europe, like Turkey, Greece, Romania, uh, Croatia, something like that. And uh, <clears throat> he, is, he is the culprit. He is involved some way in this. And he tried to, and I see this, he tried to sexually assault her. Whether, they, whether there was any DNA or not, 
uh, I have not heard. Uh, she was laying um, in a very odd position uh, in the freezer, uh, and it looked like there was more to the story, but but the police, I think, have said, no, that's, that's, that's it. So here we have a, uh, a person that tried to assault her, and um, <clears throat> shortly after this uh, death, uh, he left the employment there, and uh, <clears throat> he uh, went uh, down south, probably Florida, to work the hotel circuit down there during the winter. Uh, so <clears throat> he's not a cook. He's not a waiter. He's more of a, a, a helper with uh, large uh, catering uh, projects where he, I see him taking a tray of desserts uh, out from a cook or from a pastry chef and putting them on individual plates for the waiters. So uh, we have this person of interest, pretty easy to check up on. Um, <clears throat> all you have to do is see who had his left uh, employment a uh, week, two, three weeks after the death and uh, see what, what his description is and see if that does not connect. Now, being very practical, I look at this and say my reading has some real flaws in it and I, I'm still putting it out there as being valid. One is what is a kitchen staff worker doing there uh, at 1.30 in the morning? That's a question I can't answer. And two is the police swear that they can see anybody going in and out of that kitchen, um, that unused kitchen. And I don't know if there's one door, two doors, whatever, but uh, they said no one did. So I'm still putting it out there as having a lot of validity. It does not take a long time to uh, check and uh, see if anyone matches that um, and go from there. The second case is a missing persons case, and it's Kira Coles in Chicago. She's a nice young lady who <clears throat> finally got her act together. She was very happy with her life. She uh, is 27 years old. She got a full-time job with the Postal Service delivering mail. And uh, she was three months pregnant and uh, uh, just had told her mother that she heard the heartbeat for the first time. So uh, a gal that didn't does not deserve what I think happened to her. So the first scene is uh, that I envision is very, very telling. I see her in a, a basement <clears throat> a laundry room, and she's ironing. I don't know who irons nowadays, but anyway, she's ironing clothes, very happy. Uh, and there's a there's a washer dryer also down in that basement, and it's you know, it's a white painted white with the white machines. And there is a black male. Uh, Kara's black. There's a black male there uh, sitting on the washer talking with her. He's very friendly, very outgoing, very boyish, charming. And uh, they're enjoying each other. So <clears throat> then the next thing I see in this same little uh, picture that I, I come up with is I see bullets laying on a towel ready to be loaded in a gun. <clears throat> and then I'll save the last vision until the end. But here's my interpretation of this. Uh, <clears throat> the the uh, laundry room is the crime scene. The um, <clears throat> man there is the killer, and he shot her. Now, this man is someone she knew really well, uh, it doesn't have a boyfriend written across his forehead, but uh, it's most likely her boyfriend that did this. <clears throat> I can't tell you how he got the body out, but I can say that uh, I don't think the police have um, um, <clears throat> a location for the crime scene. Uh, I would check this out. I don't know if it's her apartment his apartment, her mother's house or apartment. I have no idea where this laundry room is, but this is the crime scene. <clears throat> the last scene I had is that I remember watching a, a, a video of all the neighbors and friends uh, were searching the woods uh, for her body. And they had a huge out, uh, out turn. <clears throat> uh, her body is not in the woods. It is farther away 
and it's in water. I wish I could tell you more. This looks like a pond to me, <clears throat> maybe a reservoir. So uh, that to me is uh, can be checked up on. Uh, I think important thing is to go to uh, possible crime scene, see if there is, use luminol, see if there are, are blood stains and start searching lakes around. I just, I don't want to see this go unsolved. It's, it's, she, she was uh, such a, a well-liked woman who finally got her act together and she didn't deserve this. And the last one is, I've had so many requests for uh, Chris Watts case. And it's baffling for me, actually, a little bit, because 90% uh, of the mystery is solved. Chris Watts snapped. He, he, he went off the deep end, and he did this. Uh, to me, the, the mystery is Nicole Kessinger. How much involvement did she have? Um, a lot of people have asked, how were they killed? Uh, and what, what order, where they asleep and so forth. If I got into that brutality of it, I could not function. Uh, I couldn't do what I'm doing. Uh, it just, I couldn't move on. So um, <clears throat> I have no idea about that. But in concentrating on Nicole Kessinger, I, I came up with two or three things. One is she's gullible and she is desperate or was desperate to find the right guy. And she thought Chris was the right guy because he does seem like a pretty steady guy. The more desperate she got and the more she fell in love with him, uh, the more gullible she got. She could have been told anything. But I do not get that she planned this, was involved in it in any way. Now, <clears throat> Nicole is the most vilified woman in the United States right now. Everyone hates her for being... Uh, the reason for this. And she is most of the reason that Chris snapped, that he wanted to change his whole life and he wanted to do it instantly and he snapped. But she really did not know anything about it based on what I see. So <clears throat> uh, I did a um, reading on her specifically and um, <clears throat> she's a wreck. Emotionally, mentally, she is a total disaster. The The one picture I got, if you can imagine watching on the news the aftermath of a hurricane or of a tornado, how telephone poles, cars, trash, uh, debris, uh, rooftops, everything is just, uh, is just laying everywhere. And that's where she is right now. She is, um, she's not doing well. And, uh, and, and it's going to take her time to uh, recover, but she uh, is uh, emotionally a wreck and a disaster. So I, not that I feel sorry for her. I don't, I don't have any morality judgments here, but I'm just saying I don't see her involved, and she is taking this hard now, uh, obviously. So uh, next time, I've been working on a lot of private cases, but uh, next time um, I will... Uh, come back to a few of requests that you've uh, asked for. I do read all of the reviews or the comments. I take them very seriously because 99% of them are very sincere. And I thank you very much. Sorry, I can't answer everyone's, but um, hopefully I'll see you in about a week, week and a half. Thank you. Bye.